You know, the blowout to the Buffalo Bills Sunday can be attested to several things on both sides of the ball. Mainly, the team lost the battle in the trenches completely. But Buffalo's defense has been known over the years to be a, a team that gets pressure even when they're not blitzing any more than just the front four. You couple that with an offensive line that's allowing pressure, I think I saw yesterday, something like 78% of snaps. And you could have the recipe for disaster. And of course, you add in an inexperienced quarterback and a coaching staff that's still trying to get in sync with what's on the field. And you end up with the train wreck that we had yesterday, which wasn't a pretty sight. Now that said, let's just jump right into the film. You know, in this first play right here, Sam goes through all his progressions and instead of going to the check down, the half second that he takes to see how the defense reacts really costs him this sack right here because he probably should have just let go of the ball to De'Ami Brown down there at the, at the bottom. But I believe his focus was on Antonio Gibson right here on this play and he was trying to see if Gibson was going to be open long and he got caught up in the midst of trying to see what was going to happen with the play there because the linebacker originally is covering Antonio and then stops. As Sam gets a little bit more experienced, he'll know that he needs to throw it to that check down after he sees his guys are not open. Waiting, especially when you got an offensive line that's not really going to give you a lot of extra time, is a bad idea. His internal clock should read 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000, and then when 4 hits, he gets sacked. Bad part is, is this is where he was at 3. Now at this point right here, De'Ami Brown is wide open. He's going to get you at least 5 to 7 yards right there with the way that he has separation on these two players right here. But just that little tiny bit of hesitation leads to the play breaking down. If you watch it back from this direction, you'll see Sam should have got rid of this ball the moment he goes to pull his arm back. But instead, he looks upfield again at Antonio Gibson, and the sack comes right there after that. I mean, these guys are up here in the trenches battling it, and, you know, their defensive line is hardcore as it is. So you hope for a line that could hold up a lot longer than three seconds, but truth is, he should have let the ball go well before when he did. Essentially, he should have let it go right there. The moment he pulls it back down, this play's over. Now this one right here was just piss poor blocking over on the edge by Charles Leno. Sam's watching Jahan Dotson over here on the side, and as soon as he flips over to go through his progressions, Leno has lost control of his man, and he's already in the backfield. The defenders on the second level were already kind of toying with him, trying to get him to throw that ball so they could pick it off. When he didn't, he stepped right up into a sack, and there was absolutely nothing he could have done besides maybe falling to the ground and not taking the hit up top. And Leno gets beat off the jump on this play right here. There's just, there's no denying it. This play right here is just a clear case of Sam trying to press the ball on third down and try to do too much. He had a bunch of guys open underneath, but none of those guys would have gotten the first down. He was trying to do too much there. He should have at least thrown the ball to somebody underneath or thrown it away and called it a, you know, a drive on this one and moved on to the next day. Essentially, though, this was like a punt at that point in the game. Now, I know there's some familiarity between the head coach over at Buffalo and Ron Rivera, being that, you know, McDermott's mentor is Rivera. And I also know that Ken Dorsey also worked underneath Ron Rivera, so there's a little bit of familiarity on both sides of the ball when Washington plays Buffalo. So Ron Rivera should have known that McDermott was going to be in his pocket trying to pull something out. Truth is, these guys came to town ready and had a game plan against Sam Howell. Now, that Buffalo defense knew that for Sam Howell to be successful, he needed to get the ball out fast. So mixing the perfect coverage scheme with the perfect blitz really worked well in their situation. Of course, bad for Washington. But they're on top of him before you can count to three. So Sam's protection was not really ideal in this situation. What he should have done, though, was thrown it as quickly as possible across the middle right there. I believe his initial thought or hope was that he could roll out to the right right there and, and Jahan Dotson would have enough time to be able to slip that coverage. But once Jahan turns around and sees that he's been sacked, he stops trying to move. Otherwise, Dotson probably could have turned and went upfield right there and Sam could have had a pretty good throw downfield, but the protection was not there. An experienced quarterback learns to read that immediately and takes what he can get. You watch it from this direction, you see that Milano comes down and 43 comes around and just Sam has no chance here of the long ball, which my guess is that's what's on his mind. Of course, what I was seeing from the other direction over there was Curtis Samuel coming across the center right of the field right here. Now Sam could have hit him for a short gain right there, 
but he didn't read 43 coming through that gap and be you know to be up on top of him until he was there well time blitz mixed with some press man coverage over there on the edges it was a really good defensive play now on this play sam sees the pressure coming instantly i think originally they intended this ball to go to the middle of the field but as soon as sam house saw that pressure he immediately went to antonio gibson over there and the ball was just horrible it was a flail the problem, of course, is as soon as he turned to look at Gibson, it was already too late to throw it. In that situation, he probably should have just taken the sack. What you'll see as the play starts off, he looks over at Cole Turner and then instantly back at the pressure in his face and lets the ball go. Leno instantly sees the issue on his back pedal and picks the inside guy, I guess figuring that gave Sam the best chance to get rid of the ball. And again, Sam trying to force the ball on third down. Now, when I first saw this play, my first reaction was like, what in the entire hell just happened there? But when I see the replay, especially from this angle, you could see he gets hit as he lets go of the ball. Otherwise, you think that something's wrong with his velocity or what the hell is he doing right there, right? But as you see, when he lets go of the ball, the defender is touching him. The ball still in Sam's hand. The defender is pushing him up underneath the shoulder right there. And it leads to the velocity kind of trailing off. I believe that ball was intended to lead Jahan Dotson and that probably would have been a touchdown. What it was, was Wiley got ghosted over there. His guy threw a juke move on him and yeah, he dove inside and his guy went outside. Now it should be stated that offensive tackle is one of the toughest damn jobs in the NFL, uh, especially when you consider the fact that all of these edge guys now are like trained in combat at this point. A lot of these guys go and get all kinds of martial arts training. I mean, Trent Williams is a freaking boxer. So I get it, the job is hard. But I also get it that Wiley gets beat quite a bit. And that was kind of nasty right there. But if you watch it from this angle, you'll see that Curtis Samuel has to actually kind of cut back a little bit and he comes off his original route. And you'll also see the backside of that end zone right there is wide open for Samuel to cut back across it, which I believe was where the original pass was heading until his arm got hit. You know, I saw a quote from Sam Howell and I can't remember when it was, but he said that he always trusts his feet more than his arm. And I believe it was said in context to how they were asking him in a split second decision if he's being pressured. This right here is a clear example of exactly that. As Antonio Gibson steps up to, to lay a block down on that linebacker coming up, he immediately makes the decision in his brain. Instead of trying to walk the pocket up just a tiny little bit, he decides he's gonna take off. And I think that was actually the wrong move. In this situation right here, he actually had a little bit of a pocket if he would have stopped right there. And if you look at it from the other angle, Diami Brown literally is cutting to the inside of the field right here and there's nobody in that section of the field. He could have been hit for a pass right there. But I think that's just the situation where Sam felt more comfortable running out of the pocket. He didn't think those defenders would catch him coming off those edges right there. I think he ends up deciding that was all the yardage he could get, which I would really like it if this guy could somehow or another learn how to slide maybe. I, I don't think that was something that's ever been taught to him, which is actually kind of surprising when you consider that he's a coach's son. I, I would have thought he would have been taught to slide a long time ago. Here's yet another example of why Andrew Wiley should not be playing tackle on the edge of this football team. It's a recipe for disaster, especially with a, a young quarterback that they're trying to develop and, and, and turn into something. I mean, guys, this angle really shows it. I, I ask you, do you think that he even touched him on that play? Because it doesn't even look like his hand even made contact with that man as he was coming around that edge. Like, like what the hell was that sam had like i don't know what like a second and a half maybe two seconds at the most before he's hit folks this is a guy that's making eight million dollars a year he signed a three-year 24 million dollar contract this offseason i'm not trying to say that there aren't other problems on this team or that there weren't other problems in this game but there has to be a better combination of guys for this lineup right here I don't know if it's time to bring Cornelius Lucas in over there at right tackle or what, but this right here is going to get <laughs> that quarterback hurt before he ever gets a chance to show us what he has. You know, Antonio Gibson has been a subject of controversy, you know, amongst fans when it comes to the talk of 
his fumbling. And I noticed yesterday in the comment section of one of my videos that it was getting said that the fumble on Antonio Gibson in that game with the Buffalo Bills was not Gibson's fault and that it was on Howe. So I made sure to grab that footage and take a look at it. And what I see is Sam Howe getting instantly pressured per design because it's a screen. So the throw is a little off and Gibson has to reach back and one-handedly make the catch. Now the reason why this it turns into a problematic play is because Sadiq Charles loses his guy and that guy blows the play up somewhat. In the process, Gibson has to spin once, spin twice, and as he's hit, he loses the ball. If fault has to be assessed here, then this is Sadiq Charles's fault right here. This play likely goes for some yardage here, at least something positive. And now, of course, here we are with Antonio Gibson fumbling yet again in a game. This play here is all on Sam. And the reason I say that, in my opinion, is pretty evident. He actually makes a really good play, slip in the pocket. And I thought he was doing something really good there. And of course, it turns into a pick six. If you watch it back from this direction, what starts as a play that, you know, oh, okay, he made a good decision to run out of the pocket, turns into a short guy trying to throw a pass on the run that he doesn't exactly take time to think over and maybe put a little bit more of a lollipop on. Like he should have put a little bit of, a, of an arc on that. There was no arc and I just hate to see plays like this. And then of course he's off balance and can't make the stop either. So the man steps in and you know, tw 26 yard run for a touchdown. Oh, what could have been on this play right here? Now, I believe that's Jahan Dotson up there at the top. Now, he makes a nice little move at the line, and you can see him call for the ball. He knows he's got his man beat up there at the top of that field. The problem is, back here at the line, Sadiq Charles loses his battle with Ed Oliver, who comes around him, and yeah, that's the end of that play. And you can see Sam sees it, is getting ready to throw it, boom, gets hit. Bad part is, Gates slides over and hits the edge rusher who's actually coming back across. Charles just doesn't hold his block. And of course, the play completely deteriorates once the pocket collapses around Sam. Now, this is exactly what Sam sees at the top of his drop back right here. Nobody's open. I'm not sure what in the world they were giving him longer developing plays for, for a younger guy with a line that's having a little bit of problem, you know, keeping pressure off of him. I would think that they would be looking for more of like quick hitters. I think as the game went on, Biennemi tried to counter that, but it led to plays like this where Sam goes through his progressions and there's nothing there. Now, I guess you could say that he could have rolled out to the right even though there was nobody to throw out there to except for Cole Turner. But to me, this is a breakdown in scheme right here. Bad part about it is, look at the block that Andrew Gates puts on that gets wasted right here. Bah! Look at that. 63 is nasty. Wow. I love those choreographed hits with those big, nasty, 300 pound hog molly ass linemen wait to the guys right there to hit him. Now, if Wiley would have held his block, maybe Sam gets positive yards out of this. Maybe. Again, top of his drop back here. You see what he sees. Now, I realized in this game that Sam was rattled. He's a young guy, he doesn't have a lot of experience but he's played quarterback probably most of his football career. So he knows if there's nothing there that he needs to get rid of it. One thing that does worry me a little bit and scare me a little bit is that as soon as he doesn't have somebody to throw to, his immediate thought is to try to run with it. And I'm not trying to say that he can't get some yardage, he can't do some damage doing it. I'm trying to say that it's a tad bit reckless and it could lead to some major issues down the road, including some big time injuries if he continues to stand up straight and get hit by those, you know, bigger, faster, stronger defenders that will ring his bell times 10. Again, top of his drop. You see what he's looking at. I believe he wants to go long, but he has Curtis Samuel there along the middle. But as he reacts, Sam Cosme actually pulls off of his block and goes down to help Wally. The crazy part is, is because it was actually Cosme's reaction. So as his man goes over to stunt, he smacks right into Sadiq Charles, who's coming off a block, and it completely frees up the man that Cosme was originally blocking. This was a bang bang mess up. This was a lot of blame to go around on this play right here. 
But Sam should have released the ball right there. But I believe that he was still looking long and not at Samuel short. And once he saw Samuel, it was it was just too late. The pocket collapsed on him. And you watch it in real time, you can see he stares at one receiver and then just brings it down and tries to protect the ball. Now, while it felt like Sam was getting sacked all day long, there actually were several times when he took big hits and got rid of the ball also, uh, like this play right here where he takes a nasty hit and the ball gets completed. In the midst of everything I've already showed, I wanted to show something positive. The line does a good job right here. Sam does a good job right here. And it goes for some good positive yards. This is the kind of play that I was hoping to see a lot more of. Curtis Samuel out there actually earning his paychecks. I talked a little bit already about, about Sam being a little bit reckless. And this play right here is exactly what I mean. Now, this is a great run. I mean, he does a nice spin, nice little juke move. He's picked up some serious yardage, but the problem is, is he doesn't know when to say when. He just keeps going. And in one breath, I love that he's got that fight and that determination in him and that he's really tough to bring down. In college, I was surprised more than once by this guy running because he comes off as being like a little guy, but he's actually pretty strong and, and pretty tough. The problem is, is that now he's in the NFL and all of these guys are big and all of them can hit and all of them know how to do things when it comes to putting a hit down on a quarterback who's out in the open field. And he's lucky he didn't get his head knocked off, which he took a pretty big uh, blow to the back of the neck, it looked like, which is obviously never good for any football player, much less a quarterback. Now, obviously, I can't be 100% sure here, but I do believe that this would have been a touchdown pass had number 50 not put his hands on this ball, which in my opinion falls back on, obviously, on Brian Robinson's blocking right there. Otherwise, I think that's a touchdown to Cole Turner. As you see, Cole's in position. Now, here was an example of them getting some pressure on Sam and Sam actually being able to roll out and get rid of the ball. Now, this is what obviously we would like to see more often than not instead of him taking, you know, unnecessary hits or just throwing it up and it getting picked off. But sometimes you don't have that option for the player to do that. Now, in this play right here, he barely has enough time, but manages to get it off to Terry McLaurin. Watch our buddy number 71, Andrew Wiley, over there on the right side. Yeah, he puts an arm on his guy, but then his guy, like, basically hops on Sam's back and bunny hops him to the damn floor. Look at this crap, man. Like, where does this guy learn to block? I mean, where is the damn effort, man? Don't get me wrong, I realize that Buffalo has some good players on that edge, but give me a freaking break, man. You cannot tell me there's nobody on the roster that can protect that edge better than that. Here's exhibit A of why Brian Robinson should have gotten more carries. This guy is tough to bring down, he's good on the next level, and look at that, he eats up yardage, man. His last carry in yesterday's game came at like the nine minute mark in the fourth quarter. Realize that for the game, he had 10 carries for 70 yards. The team was only down 16 to nothing when his last carry happened. They need to do a better job of getting him involved early and often. And once he shows that he's on, man, feed the guy. You got a young quarterback that you're trying to bring along. I realize that Eric Bieniemy is trying to make a statement right now as far as, you know, being a coach and being a play caller. But sometimes you just got to take what you could get. And, and by God, he should know that. He's been around the game long enough. He knows more about that than we do. Nice little block by Bates here that, that actually lets Brian Robinson get a couple more yards on this play. And we didn't get a chance to see much of the screen game yesterday. But when we did, you could see that, you know, the, the great things that are there that are just waiting to be tapped into, man. Now, I want to read a couple quotes that actually came from one of the linebackers on the uh, Buffalo Bills defense yesterday. And the question was about what they saw from Sam Howell to help them make plays on the ball. His response was, yeah, just quarterback vision, especially in our zone coverages. We knew that he liked to get to his targets early in his progression. So that was something that we thought we could go in and steal some stuff, and it played out in the game. 
when he's getting pressure from the D-line and guys are in his face, he doesn't have the time to look you off and go through a full progression. So we thought we had a chance to take some. And then he was asked if Howell stayed locked on the first read in his progression. His response was, yeah, I think so. Obviously, the pressure from the D-line helps a lot, but he just didn't seem to go through his full progressions. There was no one, two, three check down with him. He was kind of locking on to his guy early on and then was kind of waiting for them to get open enough for him to try to throw it in there. And that's when the plays were made. Now, after seeing the film, I'm not 100% sure whether or not I agree with that last little statement there. As far as locking on, I saw him moving around quite a bit, but there were plays when he did lock on. Generalizing is kind of a little afar there, but he was on the field, I wasn't, so we'll take his word for it 100%. My thoughts are this. Collectively, we all knew that, you know, the, the road that this season was going to take us down was going to be long and windy. This wasn't going to be something where, you know, we can expect them to win every single game or we can expect there to be no bumps in the path as they're going across from game to game. The truth is that was the third game that that offensive line has had together. And there's some problems along that line that need to be addressed. Sam Howe is also a young quarterback that's going to need some time to adjust to not only a line that's adjusting to themselves, but an offensive coordinator that's also adjusting to the personnel that he's just getting used to. Also an offensive coordinator that's trying to prove a lot in a small amount of time. And coming into that game yesterday, the talk was real high that he was being, you know, a, a solid success at it. But quite obviously, the sack totals in the first three games are definitely not something that could be looked at and viewed as, you know, acceptable. And then, of course, after the four interceptions that Howell threw yesterday, now you start looking at his stat sheet overall from the year, and it doesn't look as good as it did after the first two games. Me? I've never been much at looking at stats when a guy's in his first season or his first few games. What we want to see is that he progresses, that he doesn't, you know, get worse each game. That he sees things and that from game to game, he progresses from the last game. That he gets better than he was before. If we don't see it, then we start to worry. But seeing him fail for the first time is not reason for you to pack up your tents and head home. If anything, it's time to double down on him and see where he goes with it. You know, see where it takes him in a, a week where the team's going to play an even tougher opponent in the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, obviously, that's just an opinion of mine. But when I say that, I'm meaning they're a division opponent. We play them twice a year. So obviously, they're going to be a little bit tougher in the fact that they know you a little bit better. And he's going to be going into a hostile environment up there in Philadelphia. A couple factors that you have to take into account when you're taking on a team like Philadelphia who has that defensive line that is unreal. But at the end of the day, there's going to be growing pains for a young quarterback like Sam Howell. He's not always going to be able to come out in year one and start number four and be able to do everything perfect. You add in all the other issues and you get what you saw yesterday. And don't get me wrong, nine sacks plus five turnovers equals a loss every single week. Period. Point blank in the discussion. Hopefully the team can get back up after this shellacking at home, dust themselves off, and get ready for the next opponent. There's no rest for the weary, and the NFC East is tough this year, so they better step their games up. Let me know what you guys are thinking down in the comments. Y'all take it easy. Peace.